So we're looking at the integration, the relationship between the Ayurvedic medicine and the Oriental medicine. Uh, and so that's looking at the chakra systems, which is seeing the body as, as a, a, a photoenergetic system, a light body, versus the Oriental medicine, which sees the meridian flows, which are electronic. So we've got the electrical and the photonic. And of course, Western medicine, we primarily see the, the material substance, the protons, and how they're structured in communities, making different atoms and molecules. When we take all three of those and integrate them together, uh, along with the spirit body and the consciousness, now we're talking about the, the quintessence, the quintessential function of what life is, and that's the clinical theory of everything. So that we can come from whatever perspective, if we're looking at a Western medicine, how that affects the body, we can read it on, on the meridians electronically as they do in some of the hospitals in Germany and Israel where these techniques uh, you know, have been in use for decades and, and find out what are the energetic side effects and what, what medicines will help counteract that, that drug before it's prescribed. Uh, so it's predictive medicine and it's what I consider truly evidence-based medicine. Evidence-based medicine, in my opinion, is not about extrapolation of evidence on other people because actually extrapolation is an error of logic. If I measure your all of your neighbors and say, oh, all of your neighbors uh, love these strawberries, but I don't test you, your response to strawberries, and maybe you have anaphylactic reaction, you have a, a strong allergy to strawberries, it's an error of logic to say that because a thousand other people you know, liked this and did well with it, that that means that you will necessarily. No, evidence is based on you and your system's response. And the beauty of energy medicine is, in, in the approach that we take in the clinical theory, is that we can non-invasively test your system's response on an energetic level, on a biocommunication level, to, before we introduce the material substance, where it's hard to take it back out if you're having an anaphylactic reaction, it's too late, uh, we can say, oh, here's the energy pattern of strawberry. How does your body react energetically to that before we put the material substance into your system? So, so we have the light body that's seen in Ayurveda. We have the electrical body seen in Oriental medicine. And, and what we're proposing is that the relationship between these two can be understood as a system of plasmoids. In physics, a plasmoid is a spatial structure of plasma. We know that, that uh, different patterns and shapes occur. If you look at something like a Tesla coil, a Tesla ball, uh, I'm sure you've all seen them, where it has little tentacles that move, those are like the meridians. So the meridians, even though they have a, a set structure of the acupuncture points that's been uh, documented in a number of different ways now, including injection of radio-opaque dyes that uh, travel along the direction of the acupuncture meridian and bubble up into a circle at the acupuncture points where there's a neurovascular bundle that penetrates through uh, an insulating layer of fascia in the superficial tissue of the body. Uh, so there's a fixed structure to the points and, and the relationship between those in lines of, that we call meridians or vessels. Yet the movement of energy, like in a Tesla ball, is dynamic. It can change. The energy flow can shift from one meridian to another. It can, it can, uh, if one meridian needs extra support, it can, it can recruit energy from those around it. And we'll see this uh, all the time as we measure of the biofeedback on these meridians in response to different stress, energy stress patterns and energy medicine patterns. So we see the, the, the energy source being associated with this radiant light that comes off, that extra light that's being uh, emitted uh, related to the work of, of Professor Pop in Europe uh, for decades measuring the, the coherent light, the laser-like light coming off of our cells being emitted and absorbed by our DNA, communicating from one cell to maybe a, even a thousand cells away to, to other tissues in the body. Uh, and so there's this, this excess light that comes off, just like recent studies uh, have found 
these are subtle amounts of light, but because they're coherent, they're very effective at sending a, a, a real signal and having a real physiological effect. So recently they found that in the brain, in a totally dark room where there's no light activity, they could measure light coming out of the visual cortex when the subject would visualize a light. So, so there's that kind of evidence that, that our perception is real light. We're seeing light. What they're measuring is that little bit of extra that's, that's from the slight inefficiency or the slight radiation of light escaping from that visualization. Most of the light, the light that you're actually seeing isn't the light that's coming out and being measured. It's the light that's staying within the spirit body, creating that image that's projected into real space outside the biological body space. Uh, so so the, we can picture the meridians as these tentacles of energy dynamically reprogram, reprogramming themselves, coordinating together uh, in, in different ways depending on the environment, internal and external, that's being always read by the body. In, in electroacupuncture, the, the Germans researched and found that the body was responding to any, any radiant so energy source and everything gives off and receives energy. That's how we measured in a laboratory and identify you know, what mineral or what, what vitamin is in a substance by its fingerprint in the electromagnetic spectrum. So if it's located within a centimeter of the body, it's within that radiant field, just as we see on a Curlian photograph. Uh, we see that uh, of the fingers, the toes, and, and those can be read for the energy patterns of the meridians that go through those areas as well. So actually the, the labeling that we use, the, the terms we use for the meridians, comes from a, a blending of the Curlian uh, uh, medical work and also the German electroacupuncture work. So we have the chakras, the seven chakras, and you know, you think of the Kundalini relationship of chakra one through chakra seven as, as you know, being the direction of activation. If you see, you know, meditations on, on the chakras, it's probably gonna follow that, that flow. And that certainly is a phenomenon that people experience, like an awakening of that energy. Uh, but what we see based on integration of the oriental medicine and looking at their observations of the d development, the development of consciousness, we see a different sequence. We see a sequence that starts from the environment, from the non-local, from our senses, taking in the energy fields that surround us, going to the, activate the center, the heart chakra, which is in the center, number four of seven, in the center of the spectrum. And from there, activating outwards, you know, going to the top and the bottom, the top and then the bottom of the heart chakra, being a vortex at the top and the bottom of the central plasmoid, which is the, we know is the strongest electromagnetic field produced by the body, strong enough to go extend to the feet and the toes and feet beyond the, the, the biological body itself into the, the space that is part of you as well. Energetically, again, your, your sensory systems, your vision is the, the, the outermost uh, sphere in, in space. And, and, and the, the first and seventh chakras actually go non-local. The, the first grounds to the earth, uh, non-local to the, the biological body, but the seventh chakra connects non-locally to beyond space-time, to beyond this time, to future and past, as well as the absolute non-local of the divine.